you looking for a table saw or just looking to see if the Laguna F Fusion F2 is a quality table saw, uh, looking for something that's not going to break the bank, or whatever reason you're watching this, you're in the right place. So welcome, and we're going to get started. So we're going to be going over some of the things that I like and some of the things that I dislike about the Fusion F2, and hopefully you can make a decision whether this is the right table saw for you or whoever, if you're going to give it to somebody else and see if this is, yeah, see if this is the right table saw for you. So I think first things first, we're going to just start with the assembly. When I received this table saw, it was pretty much all put together except for the front and back rail, essentially um, the dust collection hook up there and the fence here. Um, I did anticipate that the top was going to come separate. And so I made that mistake of assuming that. And we actually, my wife works in real estate and she had some movers that uh, she gave them a call and they came right over, helped us unload this. Problem is, is my workshop is in the basement and had to get this down the stairs. Um, other than that, it was great that it was pretty much all put together um, with my back issues. It meant less bending down for me to hook up a bunch of stuff. Um, it also means that a lot of these seams are in, in, on my saw, these seams were all already good, good to go. And I didn't have to do anything with that. Um, I am going to preface this. If you watched my previous vi video on the Grizzly, um, just because one person gets one uh, good or bad um, item doesn't mean everybody's going to receive the same one. Um, I said in that one because um, my review was negative on that. And I did say I was hoping, hoping, hoping that I was the only one who had those issues. And I really hope that if you're, if you're looking at this and you buy one of these, that you don't have any weird issues. I'm just telling you that this is what I experienced um, and my experiences with this one. And hopefully you can make an educated decision. But for me, um, the, the assembly was super easy. Uh, the front and back uh, rails, rails um, come in you know, two different pieces. The back has just some automatic or some um, preset holes and everything that you put it in. Uh, the, the front rail is adjustable so you can make you can slide I'm not going to show you because it's already set up on mine you can adjust that so all your measurements are perfectly lined up with center it's super easy to be able to do that you just set your fence you know with yeah we'll get into the fence later but you set your fence and everything and you can make your, all of your uh, measurements <laughs> the top once you get the plastic and everything all cleaned off and it has the anti or you know preventative rust uh, the goo on there um, once you get that off it is actually pretty nice um, and it, it is nice and smooth um, I do recommend polishing it up or waxing it up beforehand I just waxed this um, that's probably why you can see maybe my some of my fingerprints on there there are some machine marks on there. They're not bad. Um, it doesn't affect the way that the, the miter gauge runs up and down there. Um, so out of the box, my assembly, um, everything came set up just, just the way I would hope. Um, and so I didn't have too much adjustments to do other than, you know, the fence um, I did have to make sure that my... Um, high and low adjustments were set. Um, I did have to make some, some adjustments on there. I have heard people complain the way that the switch attaches to the, the, the rail here. I, however, like it. The, it doesn't have any preset holes that you attach it into. Instead, there's a couple nuts that just uh, loosen up. They slide in from the outside and you can uh, move it back and forth. The good thing with that is you can adjust it to for yourself. So each individual, um, depending on the way that, uh, you know, where you stand. So for me, I set it up 
so that as I am, you know, if I'm going to rip a board down, as soon as I reach across, or as soon as I get past, I can just hit this with my leg, shut it off. I really appreciate this because I did not have this on my old table saw. I know this is pretty standard now, um, but since you can move it back and forth, depending on where you stand, how wide you are, how skinny you are, um, makes it easier so you can put this wherever is good for you. I had the some I had some issues right away that I was um, accidentally hitting that with my leg when I was reaching across. I just had a minor adjustment and I was good to go. I think we'll just get in, get into the fence since I'm talking about it. Uh, this fence that comes with it, uh, I really, I didn't know what I was going to think about it. I really do like it. Um, the problem with it is that you can't access it from both sides or you can't use it from both sides. You're only able to use it from, from one side. And I don't know if it's just the way that I'm used to, uh, you know, doing all my, my saw work and everything. Uh, I very rarely would ever access the fence from the other side, if ever. Um, and so for me, it wasn't that big of a big of an issue. The good things that I like about this fence, which I probably should have started with the positives and not just the what I didn't like, or I guess I, not that I didn't like it, just the, the downfall, which just so you know, coming into it, this fence only access from one side. For me, not a problem. The great things I like about this fence are um, the high and low settings on here. Um, <clears throat> so this rail, or whatever you want to call this, comes off. So I have a high and a low setting on the, on the, the fence here. So with this set up high, now obviously I have a higher fence, so I can take my boards and, you know, if I'm not going to, you know, rip something here, but let's say I'm making a rabbit or something, something a little bit higher. Now I can have that higher adjustment. If I'm ripping a, something lower and want to be able to run this along here, I was that gives that uh, that option without having to try and squeeze a little piece in between your fence. Um, so I do I do really like that. Use that several times actually today working on some projects. And another thing I like about this fence is um, if you're making if you're making multiple cuts the same length. Um, and you're gonna use this off of your fence instead of having to set up a block on here. And I'm sorry that the uh, Inker 1000 SE does not come as the uh, standard miter gauge for this table saw. However, it is nice because I can pull this back as long as my project is not here, not uh, getting in the way of the fence and the blade at the same time. You can make your multiple cuts the same length without having to to adjust or without having to attach an extra block. Another thing I really like with this uh, fence is it has these little brackets that are already on here for an attachment or you know a, a accessory bin. They are set at um, a little under 15 inches so I just cut uh, my little bin directly or exactly at 15 inches and oh golly it fits nice and snug i do have to give it a little uh a little love to get it on there um, but it holds it nice and snug so even when i'm moving my fence around it's not flopping back and forth um, i can now put my little accessories on there not having to leave them laying around i really i do like that little feature on there I just cut my base to three inches and made this out of half inch plywood. So my total overall length is just to, is four inches. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what I did. That's what it seems to, that's how it seems to fit. And now, so if I, I probably will be putting some little spacers in here, I just uh, cut, these are just three by three, um, three by three and a half. Is what I put for these little spacers, and um, 
that's yeah it works for me so i can just do more three by three and a half spacers in there and i can just uh, section that out if i choose to again if you watch my video on the grizzly i did uh, address some stability issues just uh i think that was in my follow-up so if you just watch the first video of that i apologize that i didn't put that aspect in the first video um, however the fusion here the whole thing does not wiggle back and forth <clears throat> the frame itself does not move so it doesn't give any way so if when you're leaning a little bit and then hitting on shoot you shouldn't be leaning on your table saw uh, but when you're if you're having to hit this or you're pushing a piece across it's, you don't have to worry about it torquing on you or anything like that and the mobility with this uh, table saw um, especially with somebody with back issues um, can't really lift too much or anything um, the mobility is really good with this uh, the, with the way that the weight adjustment or the weight is distributed whatever you weight distribution is set on this thing makes it super easy um, to move around and as you can see with my uneven floors in my basement um, those adjustments are easy to make without having to reach all the way down I can just adjust it with my feet Mobility is also really good if you have a small workshop area and need to constantly move your uh, tools back and forth. If you're moving things around, moving your table saw to get out, out of the way for other items, it makes it super easy to, to move around. So that elevation wheel is you know super easy up and down um, once I lock it in. Once I lock it in, it's pretty pretty locked in. Angle gauge. Um, I feel like it's a hair off here. I'm not uh, not enough for me to get too upset about. Um, I could adjustment. I I could adjust it if I wanted, um, but it stays pretty true to the four, zero to forty five. I do like the digital readout here. I didn't know that I would be uh, using that at all or how much I would be using it. Uh, but when I do a few times that I've set it to 45, um, it is pretty accurate. I do wish that um, I could, I do wish that if you unplug it when it's set at 45, that it would stay at 45. Uh, if you unplug the table saw at 45, plug it back in, the digital readout will go to zero. I wish they had a, um, no, there's another word I can't think of. Um, all I can think of is resistor and that's not correct. Um, basically it's the thing that holds in, essentially holds power there. So it would maintain, even if the light's off everything, it would maintain this so that it stays at 45 or stays whatever angle you set it to. So it didn't automatically go back to zero, but um, I guess it is what it is. If you're not unplugging and plugging back in your table saw or turning off power to it at all, um, it should, you know, you shouldn't have a problem. If you are uh, concerned about um, children coming and messing with it and you shut the power off to it, just know that that's going to go back to zero once you turn the power back on. Again, I have found that this is pretty darn accurate. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to get into the little controversial topic here, I think, is the miter gauge. The miter gauge that comes with the uh, table saw. So <clears throat> there's people that say you should always just get a new miter gauge um, when you get a new table saw. And y you should. My argument, though, is if I can't use the miter gauge that comes with the table saw, they should probably save me a little bit of money and just not sell one with the table saw at all. Well, you, if you can't afford a new miter gauge, well, you're, you're going to have to use the one that comes with the new table saw. So the, the miter gauge that comes with this table saw, um, it, there's nothing special about it, um, but it works. And it does have this little... Um, <clears throat> So if I want to make my adjustments, 
obviously loosen up. Um, but it has this positive stop here at just my 32 and a half, 45, 60, and zero. And then you can just, just a simple pull it out, push it in, and then you can lock it in. Um, for mine, the angle adjustment or the angle markings are very, um, very accurate. I have only relied on this a couple times. I get my half inch plywood and I just secure it to the back of the miter gauge and I'll run it through my table saw and then that way I have my uh, markings. If I want to do my 45 degrees, I want to do a 45, I line it up there. If I've got my 90, I line it up here. And I also have a 45 here. So that way I can, I can line up my wood with the previous cuts. And I also have one from the other side. My Incra does not allow me to do that, uh, to make that cut from the other side. So for some reason I do have to do that or uh, any reason I can use this to line that up. Um, but if you spent your money on your table saw and don't have it in the budget for an upgraded miter gauge, um, just know that uh, the one that comes with this is, is decent. Um, obviously it's not the best and that's why they don't sell them as an aftermarket, but um, yeah, it works and it'll, it'll get the job done. And one of the other uh, good things here is the plate that comes with this plate insert, whatever you want to call it. Um, it it's got its pluses and minuses. Um, I would like to do like a zero clearance insert and a dado insert. Um, I have had some issues where if I'm cutting a uh, small, like dowels and everything, they will fall into the little finger hole here. Um, just a simple twist, pull my plate off. Um, the adjustment is super easy to get it nice and flat. Um, is and then yeah, same thing, lock it into place. It does move around a little bit, even while it's locked in. Um, just know that if you are going to use this, if you're not going to get a zero clearance insert or make one or anything, um, it, it will move around at the back um, because there's nothing really holding it back here uh, laterally. The up and down adjustment to you know make sure that you're nice and flat, super easy. Um, these just uh, just insert in from the top so you don't have to remove this and adjust it and then put it back down it's just an adjustments just some simple um, allen wrench adjustments from the top so you can adjust the front here um, i haven't messed with it too much to see if it would tighten the back but uh, the front's pretty snug so they make the uh, blade replacement super easy so lift it up all the way little red tab here, just push it in, the wrench that easily stores underneath, replace the riving knife or put on the um, dust collection and the blade guards, super easy, flip that up, um, just replace, pop that off, and then this thing neatly, the riving knife neatly stores underneath. So now we're going to get into some of the stuff that I really don't like very much. Um, let's see. Well, I'll just do the first one. Is this blade guard that comes with this. So it goes in the same way uh, as the riving knife. Essentially, it's the same thing. Let's snug that down. Blade guards have a little screw that you just uh, lift that up and it stays in place. That is nice, but that's about where it ends because the problems, hopefully you can see this. The Forgive me for not knowing exactly, or not remembering exactly what these are called, 
um, but the the blade stop or the um, essentially anti kickback, whatever you want to call it, um, the way these are designed is essentially is going to dig into your wood if it comes back. The problem though is as these things are so bad that it will it leaves just pushing it through. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but it digs into your wood and leaves a mark. This is, and it'll, it'll scratch the, the wood. Well, the, not too big of a deal, but you're going to use this on plywood, which you're going to now have to sand down. You have to be super careful not to over sand your plywood. It gets even more noticeable when you have it down and now it really tears the wood. And that makes even wor a worse mark than when it's up higher, but I don't know. You might not be able to see it very, very well, but yeah, it does. It'll leave a mark in your wood. I have, I have filed these and sanded them and done everything to make sure that they still will work the way that they're designed without tearing up the wood. But um, yeah, I wish they would find something else. I don't know if they can do like a heavy duty plastic instead of a metal or something, but these things are lethal. Um, I think you can probably go spear fishing with them. Um, the other thing with this uh, flimsy plastic, so this tubing that comes with it, this rigid tubing um, will attach on here. It's not the best, uh, you know, way to attach it on, but it works. You just kind of, you know, it's like if you've ever done any um, landscaping or anything, you know, you've got your clamps and it holds it. Um, but if you don't have this lined up right, or if you don't have this right, it's going to start pulling on it. I've, I've seen people who are talking about adding an attachment, more, uh, uh, more rigid um, dust collection that goes over overhead and will keep this in place a little bit more. I really don't use this enough to make it um, to make it worth it for me. Uh, the overhead dust collection, I think, is a great idea if you, if you can get it to work. I can't um, I can't do it very well with my setup that I have here. I, I wish that um, I had something better with uh, with this table saw, but. Um, as of right now, I don't, so I just have the dust collection that comes with it and the blade guard that comes with it. I use it every once in a while. That's the other thing when you have this on here, it's a pain in the butt to, you got to make sure that the, you got to make sure that the adjustment knob is out of the way of your blade guard here. And then one of the other downfalls is the dust collection sucks or better yet it does not suck so i knew going into this that the dust collection was not good um because i had i had read and saw things about uh, the people with the dust collection issues um and so the reason is if you were looking from the top here is between the blade and this little plastic here is the the inlet for the dust collection from the inside. And so any of your, your sawdust needs to fall into this uh, little plastic here. The problem is, is let's, we've got a good oh, four or five inches um, between the top of your, uh, between your saw table and the little plastic bin here. So there's a big, you've got more area that is uh, not enclosed or not catching than you have that is catching. So I wish, I don't know what they, they could have, uh, you know, I don't know, made this little plastic catch bigger, wider, made it higher. Uh, I don't know. I wish they would have done something to make this a little bit, um, a little bit better. I don't know. I you probably can't see it very well, but I have. I've just used this a couple times today since I just cleaned this out, and I've got a bunch of sawdust on the inside here. 
And in order to get in there and clean all of the other dust out of there, we've got to remove essentially this side panel here. And it's got the four screws that you uh, are going to have to take or to unscrew to get into there. Um, I wish, I don't know, maybe that's still the best way to do it, but with as much dust as you have to deal with, I would hope that they would have made it a little easier to get in or clean out, but um, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so <clears throat> that little plastic piece from the top leads to this tube here. So this is your dust extraction tube. Um, that uh, everything that uh, your dust collection is hooked up to the outside goes through this tube and then to your dust collection on the outside. But what that leaves is all that sawdust um, from that's not getting collected, um, either spraying around the your workshop, which I feel like a lot of it does, or it falls in and gets collected at the bottom. Um, like I said, I had just cleaned this out uh, yesterday. I cut four pieces of uh, cedar, and that's what's in the bottom of it right now. So this is your uh, four inch um, attachment. I don't have that. I have the, the two and a half, so I had to just get a little adapter here um, that I put on here. I had this from my old saw. The other problem is this is where our, so this tube is leading to our dust collection port from the outside. And as it sits, um, unless you have this hooked up, uh, you're, let's say you're just uh, using the riving knife, you're, you're making some cross cuts and you can't use the, the you can't use the saw guard. So you just got the, the blade and the riving knife. You're losing all of your suction through here. Um, I wish they would have put a gate valve right here, but they didn't. Um, so what I have done, what I have done to uh, fix the little suction issue, is I just have a plastic bag I put over and I just rubber band it in place. Um, it makes it easy uh, from up top instead of having to bend all the way down here to adjust this, if I wanted to take it off here and put that bag on there, I could. Um, I just, the dust collection is not um, optimal. And I really, really wish they would have designed it different than they did, but they didn't, and this is what you have to deal with. Then on the back, we have our little storage slot for our fence. So that is my take on the Laguna Fusion F2 table saw. Uh, it for right now, I think it's about $1,800. So under $2,000. Do I think it's worth it? Would I buy it again? Absolutely. Um, do I wish that there were some changes to it, some upgrades? Absolutely. Do I want to pay for those upgrades? Not right now. Um, so if you, yeah, if you're looking for something under the $2,000 mark, wondering if this is worth it. In my opinion, I would say yes. Um, I would, like I said, I would buy it again, even knowing the some of the, the faults that uh, I knew going into when I bought it. Um, I knew about the dust collection and some of the other stuff. So um, yeah, I would buy it again. Uh, I hope this, I hope this video helped. I hope maybe you can, you know, use it to either purchase or not. I'm not telling you you should or shouldn't. Um, I just want to give you the, the most information, the best information. So for you to make a educated decision, uh, what's going to be best for you, what's going to work for your circumstances. So if you liked the, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get more, watch more videos. If you have any questions, comments, concern, Put it in the comments section down below. If you there's anything else you would like to see from us, uh, you can always go to toferwood.com. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for checking out the video. And.
thank you for checking out the video.